Many things have significantly changed at various stages of the development in GTA San Andreas. A good example would be Lance Ryder Wilson, whose story we have discussed in detail in the episode that is currently displayed on the screen. Looking at Ryder, for example, you can easily say that the changes taking place are completely natural because it is difficult from the very beginning to plan everything perfectly and to come up with certain concepts. Sometimes it even happens that the theoretically best ideas come to mind late in the development of a given game. There are also, let's call them, the kind of changes that need to be made because they are caused by external factors, as was the case with GTA 3 and the 9-11 events that happened shortly before the planned release date of the game. Anyway, fortunately, in the case of the GTA series, we can take a look at some changes due to some leftovers in the game files, for example. The same is the case with today's episode, in which the launch of remasters, which took place in the fourth quarter of 2021, also played a significant role. The remasters shed even more light on Rockstar's original concept of the Grove Street families and the Balas. It is extremely important to us because it is all the known changes these gangs have undergone during the entire process of creating GTA San Andreas, which we will deal with in today's video. Welcome to the Gaming Investigators channel, and without further ado, enjoy the video! In the beginning, we will talk about the Flats Gang, which we know from GTA San Andreas as the Ballas. Our observations show that the Ballas were called the Flats before Rockstar North came up with the concept of the Green Saber, which is one of the key threads in the game. We think so because the name of this game appears for the last time in the Green Saber mission in the form of dialogue lines or messages from the game, but more on that later. Now, let's see what we managed to find out about this gang. The first thing that immediately caught our attention is that the Flats Gang is mentioned very often in the game's code. We were able to find all this thanks to the relatively recently released GTA Trilogy remasters, specifically in the scripts from the first version of them. One of the examples is files related to pedestrians belonging to a given group in the game. For example, we will show a ped group file where we can see a group of peds that are assigned to Gang 1, which is defined as Balas, aka Flats. Another example is a script that determines the gang's attitude towards other criminal organizations or the player himself. The Flats Gang also appears here, while the name of the Balas is not mentioned even once. Furthermore, unlike the Orange Grove families, the Flats have appeared very rarely in magazines and articles. This was probably because the Flats were one of Rockstar's earliest game development ideas that were abandoned relatively quickly. Interestingly, the IGN article mentions both the Flats and the Balas as two separate factions. Perhaps at some stage of production, the developers planned the Flats to be one of the Balas factions. As we know, in GTA San Andreas, the entire Ballas gang consists of four factions – Front Yard Ballas, Roland Heights Ballas, Kilo Tray Ballas, and Temple Drive Ballas. Perhaps the Flats were supposed to be the fifth faction, but in this case, it cannot be ruled out that the author of the discussed article could make a simple mistake. Anyway, as we mentioned earlier, the Flats were supposed to take part in many missions from the storyline taking part in Los Santos. When we see lines of code related to the Balas, such as respawn, adding animations, or adding weapons to the inventory, we can often find the word flat in the names. Moreover, some missions have unused dialogues that mention the original name of the Balas. Examples of such tasks are Sweet and Kendall or the Catalyst mission. In the first one, Sweet was supposed to talk about the car belonging to the Flats during the separation, while in the second one, we were supposed to see a message saying that the train should be protected from the Flats. The last quest of this type is the drive through mission, where we have two messages that are not used by the game. The first one was going to pop up after we spotted the Balas at the Cluck and Bell fast food restaurant, while the second one was meant to appear when we failed the mission and the Balas will reach Grove Street. The next point of the episode will be the description of the mission's Grey Imports and the Green Saber, since they are strongly story related to the Flats. In the case of the Grey Imports mission, we know perfectly well that it is one of the most important tasks in connection to the plot of the Russian Mafia. We recently released a video about it, so we strongly recommend you to check it out. Continuing the topic, thanks to the leaked script of this mission from GTA The Trilogy Defective Edition, it turns out that the mission was supposed to look a bit different. In the final version of the game, there will be a meeting between the Russian dealer Andrei Tolotov and the two Bala members. However, according to the remaster script, the meeting was to be attended by two Russian Mafia bosses and another person known as Flat Boss. 
As you can guess, it was supposed to be the boss of the Flats, or possibly one of the OGs of this gang. It is true that the script does not say what the Flats boss should look like, but one of the people dealing with beta content suspects that it could be a skin of a certain character from the introduction movie. We're talking specifically about a black man in a purple shirt who is hijacked by CJ outside Luigi's club. Since this character skin cannot be found in the game files, there are assumptions that it may have been removed after the Grey Imports mission script was changed. Many interesting things can be found in the Green Saber mission. Currently, you can see the dialogue script of this mission on the screen from GTA Trilogy Defective Edition files. Note that there is not a single word about the vehicle from the title, the Green Saber. Besides, just like in the final version, Caesar asks us to meet in the car, where we are waiting for Big Smoke. The change, compared to the final version, is that originally it was Big Smoke who organized the action of catching the flats, not Sweet. Of course, we are talking about the battle under Mulholland intersection. Moving on, when CJ notices Big Smoke, he is seen in the Flats car, and not next to the Green Saber. In addition, a lot of dialogue lines and messages from the game mention the Flats, not the Balas. And most interestingly, this early script does not even mention Ryder once, which is further evidence that this character was not meant to be a traitor to the Grove Street families. And now, we will move on to the second part of the episode, in which we will deal with the Orange Grove families, which we meet in the game under the name of Grove Street families. In the world of GTA San Andreas, we can find a lot of OGF leftovers, which quite clearly show us that the name of this gang was used until the late stage of the game's development. While exploring the topic, you can come across many audio files that prove how much effort Rockstar North has put into constantly reminding the player about which gang he belongs to. In the game files, we managed to find a total of 17 lines of dialogue by CJ who mentions both Orange Grove families and Orange Grove Street. Some of the audio files can be heard when fighting a hostile gang, while the others are played when we have two to three stars of the wanted level. Families, Orange Grove families. OGS for life, bitch. OGS in the house, bitch. OGS, punk, hear that? OGS, punk ass, bitch. OGS, who the fuck is asking? OGS, bitch! OGS, fool! OGS, fuck you, punk! Orange Grove for life, motherfucker. Orange Grove Street families. Orange fucking Grove fucking street. The original hood, motherfucker. Orange Grove. What you think, motherfucker? Orange Grove. Why, bitch? OGS, why? Yeah, OGS. You ain't got it yet? OGS, bitch. In addition, we also managed to find many references to the Orange Grove family's gang in magazines and articles. Currently, you can see pictures from different magazines on the screen. Most of them appeared before the release of GTA San Andreas, but some were released sometime after. When it comes to news articles, we used articles from the IGN website. The links for those who are interested are, of course, in the description below. Generally, if you manage to find similar articles, please send a link to the article in the comment or via email. Thanks in advance. Another proof that the Orange Grove family's name was used quite often before the game release is that we can find a lot about it in the game world itself. For example, after entering a tattoo parlor in Los Santos, we can see the Orange Grove family's tattoo. Another element that refers to the original version of the gang is one of the artworks in the game. The picture shows a black man wearing a cap, sunglasses, and an orange sweatshirt. Many players have long thought that the person in this artwork is CJ, but the truth is completely different. It is OG Loke, and we can recognize him, for example, by a golden chain or a mustache, which, by the way, is not visible in the final version of the game. Another good example is a pedestrian named Orange 12 by default. He is quite an interesting statement, which we will listen to now. Come on, man, ain't we the same set? As we can probably guess, this ped was initially a gang member, but after some changes, he just became an ordinary ped instead. And finally, we will quickly discuss probably the most striking references to the Orange Grove family's gang in the game world, which are graffiti. After researching and carefully checking the streets of Los Santos, we managed to spot as many as 18 examples of such graffiti. In our opinion, the developers deliberately left these references in the game, just like the rest of the beta content, as it is another great way to build the game community. People looking for traces of how the game looked at various stages of development often form groups and then discussions where the players are presenting their findings, thus infecting new people who consequently also become fans of the game or even the entire franchise. 
Summing up today's episode, it is thanks to all the clues that we can find in various places that we could find out a bit about what the Grove Street families and the Ballas looked like originally. As you may have noticed, there are quite a lot of changes. And what's the coolest thing about it, and what we'll repeat, is that many of these changes can still be noticed while playing the final version of GTA San Andreas. If you enjoy beta content videos, check out our episode dedicated to GTA Vice City missions changes. We would also like to add that we are very pleased that you comment on the videos in so many ways and support the channel. In the meantime, take care, and see you until the next one. Bye!